So who among you, you enjoyed the presence of God during worship? And you feel like you have received the healing power of Jesus? Amen? Amen. And uh, before I would begin, uh, my husband told me to uh, announce this po. If you are anywhere near around the market, Vegan City Market, every Wednesday we have a Bible study there at 1 p.m., so, pwede po kayong mag-join. You can join us. And also, uh, we have a newly opened Bible study at Bantay. Uh, yung kainan po doon na parang food court. Every Wednesday also at 6 p.m. The Lord is working. Amen? Amen. So, today we will study a very, very powerful truth. A very powerful message from the Word of God. And it's all about the healing of Jesus. Can we say healing? healing? And I entitled my teaching today in the pool of Silwam. So before anything else, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord. We bless you and we glorify your name for you are worthy. We ask your Holy Spirit to be with us today as we study the truth on your healing power. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you alone can heal. And that in you, we can receive complete healing and deliverance from infirmity. And so we ask that today you would teach us, open up our hearts to receive the fullness of your word. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to tenderize every heart that we may not leave this place the same way we came in. In Jesus' name, amen. So in the pool of Siloam, uh, Maybe some of you, you have read this already from the Bible. If you have your Bibles with you, can we please bring it out this morning? Labas po natin yung mga Biblia natin. And the pool of Siloam, you know, Siloam is a place, of course, in Israel. But this pool is adjacent, located to that area near, uh, of course, the city of David or in the city of David. And did you know that the, punk, uh, the pool of Silu, Siloam, the function during Jesus Christ's time of this pool is for ritual bathing, for cleansing. And they call that in, uh, in Hebrew, mikvah. And the waters from this pool flow from the Gihon Springs. Na nanggagaling po, it comes from what? The Kidron Valley. So, in that pool, you can actually drink the water. Ganun po siya kalines. That is how clear and uh, uh, clean the water is. And um, during the tabernacle of feasts, dyan din po nagdo-draw ng water. The, the priests would draw water from that pool. You know, whenever they go to uh, sacrifice in the altar of God. And it is in that same pool that Jesus healed the man that was born blind from since na napanganak siya, he was already blind. And that is found in John chapter 9. So today, I want us to turn our Bibles to John chapter 9 and let us study together. I want to begin by saying that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can we say amen to that? And if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus also heals yesterday, today, and forever. You know, uh, with the pandemic, many have started to believe or to be convinced that Jesus is not healing people anymore. Because of the outbreak of so many diseases, of the virus, but let us be confident this morning, church, that Jesus is still in the ministry of healing people. Can we say amen to that if you believe? Yes. He equally heals our physical bodies and so with our spiritual lives. And His name is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals Jesus is still healing people. In the Bible, Jesus healed all. Can you say all? So the same way, at the same time today in our generation, 
Jesus is still healing all. Naniniwala po ba kayo? The good news is the blood is still working. Can we say the blood of Jesus is still working? Contrary to what is happening outside of this world, I want us to be firm in this and believe with all of our hearts that Jesus is able to heal. And healing in English word means wholeness. Can we say wholeness? Who among us, we want to receive wholeness in our lives. Can you raise your hands if you do? Yes, we want that, we desire that. But today, let us try to understand from the Word of God that our physical suffering must be viewed in terms of causes or purposes. Why is it that we suffer from infirmity? Ano po bang infirmity, sickness or disease? Why is it that we suffer from these kinds of diseases and illnesses? And from the Word of God, of course, it could be number one to examine or to test our level of faith in the Lord. Or it could also be to what? Refine and build us up. To edify us as His children. It is for ed edification. It is also punishment for sin. Whether we like it or not, people get sick. People suffer from illness and infirmity because of sin. Where can we find that in, in the Bible? In Mark chapter 2, Jesus healed the paralytic man. Meron pong pinagaling ang Panginoong Jesus in Mark chapter 2. And Jesus made a distinction between sickness and sin in that account. You know why? Because when Jesus told the, the paralytic man to rise up and get up, he said some, some important words that we should also apply in our lives. Jesus said, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The Lord would want us to repent to Him for these sins that do not please His holy name. And another is to show forth God's glory, to give the honor and the exaltation to our God. And lastly, to continually be a witness of Jesus Christ. Who among you, you want to become a witness of Jesus here on earth? Amen. Gusto po natin yan. So this morning, we will start to study how can we experience the healing, that same miraculous healing that took place in the pool of Siloam in the time of Jesus when he healed the man born blind? Are you ready? So there are two thoughts this morning that I want us to ponder upon. Let's go to John chapter 9 verses 7 and 11. And said to him, having said these things, I'll start in verse 6. He spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then Jesus anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Let's go to verse 11. He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. Who among us, we want to receive healing like this man born blind? Raise your hand today. Then we must desire to participate. We need to accept that Participation is required so we can receive healing from God. Because healing only takes effect when we come into agreement that our participation with Jesus is significant. 
Importante po yung participation sa Panginoong Jesus. Notice from the scriptures that we have read, Jesus did instantly heal the man born blind. He is fully God and fully man, right? Jesus could have just said, Come here and I will lay hands on you and you're completely healed. But what happened in that account was, Jesus instructed the man who was born blind to go and wash himself in the pool. After spitting uh, the saliva on the mud and Jesus applied it on the eyes of that man, then he instructed him, go wash yourself in that pool. So, we have read a while ago, the meaning of Siloam is sent. We have to understand this church that Jesus was giving the blind man the freedom to choose whether he wanted to be healed or not through participation. And just like us today, Jesus is wanting you and me to participate when we are suffering from sicknesses, diseases, or illnesses. Because the outcome of participation is so great. Can we say great? That in participating with God, we would recognize our need to humble ourselves before Him. And that there is true return and real repentance, genuine repentance of our sins. And of course, there will be restoration of our physical and spiritual health. Who among us, we agree that healing requires participation. Amen. And the man born blind haven't seen Jesus. Blind po siya eh. So meaning he did never see Jesus in his whole life, in his lifetime. Maybe he just heard the voice of Jesus or the voice of people as Jesus was passing by in that location. But then you see, this man born blind demonstrated total, complete, and true devotion to Jesus. And he said, you know, he submitted himself to be healed by him. Because truthfully, church, part of our healing comes from us. I want to repeat that. Part of our healing begins with us. John chapter 9, verses 30 to 33. The man answered, Now that this is remarkable. Anong sabi niya doon? Can we please go there? John chapter 9, verse 30 to 33. The man answered, Why this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. At that time, the man who was healed from physical blindness was responding to the Pharisees. Ito po yung sinagot niya. Well, it amazes me. How come that you don't believe? Right? But maybe, just maybe, this story is really wanting us to teach something. That God is not only restoring our health, but He is restoring our hearts. That Jesus is calling us out to obedience, to humility, and to full trust in Him. That He is restoring a right relationship with the Father. Jesus is sending all of us to wash in the pool of His healing because He knows and He is sure of who He is. We must remember that when we are suffering from sicknesses or we are sick or having a lot of health constraints, ito po sana ang ating laging pakatatandaan. Remember that the one who commands 
is always greater than the one who participates. And the commander is Jesus Christ himself. We are the participants. Ibig po sabihin, mas makapangyarihan ang ating Panginoong Jesus. And so, we must put our full faith in Him and put our complete reliance on Him and depend on His power to heal us. When He says that you should do this, you should not do this, we should make a decision to agree with the Lord Jesus and participate with Him. I want to set my life as an example. Alam niyo po, I have been through um, a lot of experiences when it comes to being um, struck with PTB, pulmonary tuberculosis. I even experienced having dengue, pneumonia. I was hospitalized because of pneumonia. I was also having problems with high cholesterol because of stress. As young as I was, I was only 26 years old. So, I've experienced all of those. But I thank the Lord because He gave me the grace and the wisdom to participate with Him and to participate with the people whom He would send to help me rise up from all of these sicknesses and diseases took the medicines that are appropriate, exercise, nutritious diet, change of diet, a healthy living and lifestyle. That is the challenge for all of us today. Are we doing our part so that we can receive our complete healing? And then, there's another form of sickness or disease. Depression. Many people now are battling, battling with depression. Especially with the change of and transition of this world that we're living right now. Especially the younger generation. Maybe they're also seated beside you. Hindi mo alam, they're already battling with depression. And if you ask me this morning, I've been there. I've been there. And I'm not ashamed to tell you I experienced depression in my life. You know why I know? Because if you're depressed, you cannot sleep at night. You, can, you cannot even taste the food. If it's good or it's not, you cannot hear and understand what people are telling you because your mind is so overwhelmed. And when you're depressed, you would wake up in the middle of the night and not sleep again and get the rest and sleep that you would need. And those times, the Lord gave me the grace the wisdom and the strength to battle and fight and overcome that depression by doing my part. You know why? Because healing, healing from depression is a decision that you have to make. You cannot say, oh, I am depressed. I don't know what to do. I'm thinking also of committing suicide to end my life. But you know what? Jesus is commanding each one of us to come against depression in His name. Because Jesus is greater than any disease. Brothers and sisters, cancer is limited, depression is limited, heart diseases are limited, diabetes is limited, your mental health issues, any physical, psychological disorder, they're all limited. But I tell you this morning bravely, Jesus Christ is not limited. We cannot limit Christ. We can never limit Christ. 
So what did I do in those times of depression? Every time I would wake up in the middle of the night and I don't know what to do, I would turn on worship songs and start worshiping the Lord. Every time that the devil would attack my mind, I would pick up my Bible and meditate scriptures until the Word of God is the only weapon that I have in my spirit. I would reach out to the right people and allow myself to be mentored and seek counseling because miracles, healing, require participation with Jesus. Hindi ka basta mahihil. You need to do your part. Can we say amen to that? Can you relate with what I'm saying this morning? What is your pool of Siloam? What is your own Siloam? If God is sending you to counseling, go for counseling. If God is instructing you to go and consult a doctor, go and see a physician. Because maybe... You are diagnosing your disease wrongly. If God is commanding you to, you know, repent because of a generational sin and curse, then repent humbly before the Lord. Because it is only by agreeing with Jesus in participation with Him that we can receive complete healing. Jesus is wanting us to participate. Desire, have the seal, have the passion to participate and agree that you can be healed in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Let us remind ourselves this morning, our commander, is always greater than us. But He wants us to participate. All right, let's move on. Let's go to John chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. And we will read all together. So, Jesus heard that they had cast Him out, and having found Him, He said, so at this account, The Pharisees cast out the man who was born blind that was healed by Jesus because he was trying to um, insist that Jesus healed him. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, for a judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. The Lord wants us this morning, brothers and sisters, to defy spiritual blindness. You know, spiritual blindness is the reason for physical blindness. Totoo po yan. Sometimes we think that we are sick physically, but no, we are sick spiritually. In this story, Jesus heals the man born blind in front of all the people and the crowds. He intended to do that. You know why? Because Jesus knew that people were watching. Jesus knew that the Pharisees were there, scrutinizing and speculating. But then, Jesus intended to heal the physical blindness of this man so that the people who were there, filled with unbelief, will also 
be healed from spiritual blindness. In John chapter 9, verse 18, the Jews there, if you would read, I would read to you, the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. They even called the parents of this man born blind. The Jews or the Pharisees called Tinanong nila, are you truly blind since birth? And then the parents answered, you have to ask him, he's already of age. And this man who was healed by Jesus insisted, Jesus, he is the man, he is the one who healed me from this blindness. You know, sometimes we are quick to conclude in the natural because we don't fully understand what's happening in the spiritual. Questions like, Lord, I am devoted to you since I was young, faithfully serving you, even my family, but why am I suffering from physical disease and illnesses and infirmity? Questions like, Lord, I'm living a healthy lifestyle. I don't even eat pork. I exercise five times a week. I have a good group, healthy relationship and community. But why is it that I was diagnosed with this autoimmune disorder? Why do I have a cyst? Why is this uh, fear inside of me? Na baka may cancer. Or maybe... We say, Lord, why is it that I'm suffering from this and yet I'm doing my part? I fear you, I worship you, I'm always in the services. I give what is due you, Lord. But could it be that the Lord is wanting us to understand His full judgment? Do we truly understand the judgments of God. You know, we need to consider before our God whether we reject spiritual stretching and equipping because we have the wrong knowledge or understanding of who He is and His ways. Sometimes we want to be healed in the way that we want to, in our own terms and in our own hands, in our own uh, say. But Jesus is teaching us this morning, church, that He is God and He has the final say. Do we want to receive healing? Then we need to understand the balance between divine sovereignty and human responsibility. I will repeat, if we want to receive complete healing, we need to understand the difference between divine sovereignty and human responsibility. Maybe, just maybe, we have overlooked the leadership, the great leadership of Christ in our lives. And sometimes we reason out with Him, we bargain, we complain, we rationalize. But that is not what Jesus wants for us. He wants us to find all the answers we need in His presence. That when we are sick, when we are feeling unwell, when we are going through infirmity and physical distress... You know what He wants out of us? He wants us to practice His presence. He wants us to perfect our faith. He wants us to make Him our greatest portion in spite and despite of. He wants us to be delivered from our spiritual blindness so that we can fully see. We can fully see and we can fully understand. Who among you, there came a point in your life that you desperately want healing. You wanted healing so bad, and then you made all necessary ways and methods and gestures 
just so you can be healed. You go and uh, go and consult the doctor. You read the internet. You study what medicine is appropriate. You go herbal. You go natural, and all those are good. Spiritually speaking. Some of us, if we really truly want to be healed, we begin suddenly to become very committed to the Lord. Lord, I will give my tithes to you. Lord, I will offer my offering, perfect offering to you, Lord. Lord, I will involve in ministry. Lord, I will uh, sow a big amount for the church project. Lord, I will employ all of these spiritual disciplines. Just so, maagasanak. Just so I can receive complete healing. But you know, unless Jesus Christ is our reference, we will never be healed. We need to have Jesus as the center of our reference. We will serve the Lord. We will be committed with our spiritual disciplines. We will do our part. Not because we want the result, but because we believe in Jesus. But because we want Jesus. But because we desire Jesus with all of our hearts. And there is no plus. That is spiritual maturity. Alam niyo po ba kung ano ang spiritual maturity? It is the process of becoming like Christ. And all of us are in this process of becoming like Jesus. Amen? And if we want to be in this process of spiritual maturity so we can be healed and cured from spiritual blindness, then we must take infirmity as an opportunity and not an offense. Let us take our physical infirmity as an opportunity, church. And never as an offense. Take it as an opportunity to grow and know Jesus more in your life. Because it's all about having the right view. Having the complete knowledge of who our God is. Because when we know and we know who truly Jesus is, then our offense will be turned into an opportunity. Even our prayers will be transformed. Even the meditation, meditation of our hearts will be renewed. Magbabago po ang panalangin natin. May improve yung pananaw natin sa buhay. When we take our sickness, our disease as an opportunity to draw our lives closer to the Lord. That instead of saying, God, why? God, why? God, why am I sick with this? Why? Bakit ako pa, Lord? Instead of saying that, we would say, God, I am sick with this. My daughter, my child is sick with this. Lord, my family is suffering from this disease. But Lord, I take this as an opportunity to know your leadership and your love in my life. I will not take this, Lord, as an offense. But God, I will take this as a lesson for expansion, for pruning, for maturing, for stretching in my life. We need to realize our great need of Jesus. Because in 1 Peter Chapter 2, verse 7. So the honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So it is only by faith in the Lord Jesus our God that we can be completely healed. The Lord our God is looking for true hearts who would say that, you know, yung totoong bukas, yung mga mata ng puso natin. That the eyes of the heart that is opened would say, God, I am sick, but I say that you are still God in my life. God, I'm going through this depression, 
but I say that you are still good and you are good forever. That you, Lord God, are seated on your throne and that you are eternally faithful whether my healing has already taken place or not. Do we have eyes to see? Just like the prophet Isaiah said, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. Unless they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, then I would heal them. Maybe the Lord is just wanting us to be delivered from spiritual blindness. Are we truly after the healing? We are more than after the healing or the healer himself. Sometimes we are so focused on the healing. Lord, I want to be healed. We forget that we truly need not the healing, but we need more the healer himself. The, the challenge and the charge for all of us, brothers and sisters, even when the healing doesn't completely come in our lives, are we still going to believe? Because this is the reality of Christian life. Ito po ang sasabihin ko. Our healing and our ultimate healing will never come unless we are one with Jesus. Here on earth, there will always be tears. There will always be pain. There will always be sorrow and suffering. That is why we desire for Jesus to come. We desire for our King to come so then we can have everlasting healing. Amen. So in this story in the Bible, you know, the Lord Jesus has demonstrated this, uh, has depicted and this um, sending of the man born blind to the pool of Siloam because you know why? He was wanting us to get the lesson of being baptized in the pool of His love. Some of us, we have been Christians for 10, 20, 30 years, but we have never been baptized in the water and in the Holy Spirit. Because baptism is a public confession that, Lord, you are my God and you are my Savior, telling the whole world, declaring that you have been resurrected by Jesus just like what we have sung a while back. It is not the pastor who will baptize us. It is not a man. It is Christ, the Holy Spirit himself, who will baptize us in his love. And also, he wants us to understand the intensity of his love for us. That only Jesus can do what he can. He is sending us to be baptized in his love so that we can live forever. Because the power of love cannot be contained. You know, the power of Christ's love cannot be contained. We cannot cripple the love of Jesus. We cannot paralyze the love of Jesus. His love is unfailing. And so today, church, Christ is inviting us, you and me, to go and be washed in the pool of His unfailing love. And that is all about the story of the pool of Siloam. He wants us to participate with Him and He wants us to defy spiritual blindness even right now.